Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. This is Playing With Embroidery Stitches number two. I've made a playlist up to keep um, them all together in one group and I've decided I will post one a week for a while on Thursday. So be sure to subscribe. There's a button in the lower part of your frame. Um, I learned how to do that this week. Um, be sure to subscribe and then YouTube will show it to you when you're on YouTube. Okay. Today I'm covering using embroidery stitches as quilting and I often do this. I don't do it on big quilts that are going to be needing lots of washing or um, get bent and squished and roughed up. But on small projects and wall hangings, it's a very nice accent to the to do instead of just um, uh, plain quilting, I guess, regular cotton thread quilting. And of course I'm talking by hand. Um, so my patchwork sewing machine cover that you see here This project is a perfect example of where I've used uh, embroidery stitches for my quilting. I'm talking hand quilting, of course. Now, this, uh, when I use fusible applique on a quilt, I always use um, embroidery floss and do a blanket stitch around the different shapes. In this case, this is not fusible. This is um, reverse applique. But I have used the blanket stitch here too, in a contrasting color. Now, the, my rule for blanket stitch is as wide as it is long. So if you're going an eighth of an inch apart from each stitch, then make your stitches about an eighth of an inch long. Of course, there are no hard and fast rules. You do it as you like. That's just how I do it. Unless I'm trying to be decorative and then sometimes I make the length of the stitches higher and lower. One of the things that I occasionally get asked about the blanket stitch is what's the difference between a blanket stitch and a buttonhole stitch? They're basically the same stitch, but the buttonhole stitch historically was used very tightly together and very tiny around holes meant for buttons to go through. And the blanket stitch is the bigger version that you see on the edges of some blankets. It's an easy way to keep track of it. All right. Some other um, uh, embroidery I've done on this to quilt. As the decoration of the sewing machine, I've stem stitched that. And over here, I've also done some stitching, and this is back stitch here. Now, my favorite, and what I think really makes this project a thing, is the background grid quilting that I've done, just a basic running stitch, not tiny, tiny stitches, but relatively even in a contrasting color. And one of the things I like to do when I'm going to do that is choose a background fabric that has a dot to it or some kind of grid, and I use it to stitch along, which makes it so easy. You don't have to mark anything. Okay. I think that's it. <laughs> Short and sweet. They don't have to be long videos, but they just have to be informative. Let me know if there's any video things you'd like that I could be helpful with as far as quilting goes. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you'd like to hear, learn. Let me know if this was helpful at all. I'd love to hear. Thank you, and I'll see you next week.